Hello and welcome to HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. For more information about STD and HIV testing, check the link in the description or in bio section. Have you ever wondered if a real cure for HIV is within reach? Stick around until the end because you're going to learn how a groundbreaking vaccine strategy called germline targeting and the trials known as IAVG03 and IAVG02 could change everything we know about preventing and treating HIV. Hello and welcome to HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. Today, we're jumping straight into some really revolutionary sources, uh, detailing genuine progress in the hunt for an effective HIV vaccine. That's right. For decades. I mean, the complexity of HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus has just made it feel almost untouchable by traditional vaccine science. It really has. But now researchers are applying this uh, sophisticated technique that might, just might, finally give our immune systems the upper hand. Yeah, we're talking about something called germline targeting. It's really a fundamentally new strategy. Okay. It doesn't try to, you know, chase a virus as it keeps changing. Instead, the idea is to train the body's defenses um, right from the beginning. From the ground up. Exactly. From the ground up to seek out and attack the few stable parts of HIV, the bits the virus actually can't afford to change. Wow. Okay. That is a radical pivot because, right. as you said, HIV mutates and it hides so effectively. That's why traditional vaccines, which, you know, need a stable target, they've just failed again and again to give broad lasting protection. That's the critical context here. Mm -hmm. The core of this new research, and a lot of it is being spearheaded by groups like IAVI, the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, right. is essentially to stop chasing the strains we see now and start engineering the human immune response for what might come. Okay, so our mission today is pretty clear. By the end of this deep dive, you listening should understand the uh, the mechanics of germline targeting, these major milestones that have been validated in human trials like IAVIG003. Crucial trials. And really what this progress means for the prevention methods we have now and also for that ultimate hope, you know, a permanent vaccine. So let's unpack this challenge first. Yeah, let's do it. To really get the solution, we have to understand the problem, right? HIV is just a master of disguise, a shapeshifter. It changes its outer coat, its envelope um, incredibly quickly. Alarmingly fast. Mm. So if your immune system learns to fight the virus from, say, January, that defense might be totally useless against the version circulating in March. Which explains why traditional vaccines, the kind that usually present a stable target for the immune system to remember, just haven't kept up. Exactly. So to get real lasting protection, researchers have been hunting for what they call broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs for short. Okay, BNABs. Why are they the sort of the holy grail here? Well, they're incredibly powerful because they don't just block one strain of HIV. They can block many different strains. Uh, <laughs> and crucially, they do this by attacking these small, highly conserved areas on the virus surface, the parts that HIV absolutely needs to survive and replicate. The plus it can't easily mutate away from. But generating these BNABs naturally, yep. that's extremely rare in people, isn't and it? Incredibly rare. That's the problem. So this germline targeting strategy, it shifts the whole focus. Right. Instead of trying to push the immune system to somehow make that final complex BNAB right off the bat, which almost never happens, mm -hmm. scientists are trying to train the specific cells that just have the raw potential to become BNAB factories later on. I see. Exactly. So inside your body, you have millions and millions of these B cells that haven't produced antibodies yet, the naive B cells. Okay. And hidden among them are these extremely rare specific cells that have the right genetic blueprint, the germline, you could say. Ah, the germline. To eventually evolve into these powerful BNAP producers. The whole strategy is designed to find those specific rookies and put them on a very meticulous training schedule. Okay, so if I'm following, think of those naive B cells like uh, rookie players on a team. Most aren't destined for superstardom against HIV. 
Right. But a few have this innate potential. And germline targeting is like designing the perfect, super specific first practice drill just for them to yeah. unlock that potential. That's a great analogy. And it is a specific drill, really. It's a multi-step regimen. This isn't your typical one-shot vaccine. Okay, so walk us through this training plan. What's the first and I guess maybe the most critical step? Right. Step one is priming. This uses a specially engineered vaccine component called a primer immunogen or a primer shot. Oh. Its entire purpose, its only purpose, is to find and activate those very, very rare naive B cells, the ones that are genetically predisposed, the ones with the right germline. Got it to eventually make BNABs. This primer acts like a highly specific key designed to unlock only those targeted cells and nobody else. Okay, so let's say we successfully activate these rare rookie cells with the primer. That's amazing. But what stops them from just, you know, maturing down some random path that isn't helpful? Once they're activated, B cells start mutating, right? Yeah. That's normal. How do the next shots, the boosters, make sure they evolve correctly towards making a BNAB? Ah, that's the, uh, the real elegance and the challenge of the whole process. And that's where step two comes in, shepherding or boosting. Okay. This isn't just one booster. It requires a sequence of different booster shots. Each one presents a slightly altered target, a slightly different challenge. Ah, I see. It's designed to guide the B cells that responded to the primer, guiding their evolution along a very specific maturation pathway. You're essentially forcing them to refine their antibody response step by step until they target only those essential stable parts of the virus. It really sounds like an advanced course in molecular self-defense for the immune system. It kind of is. And the final result, if this shepherding works, is that these B cells mature into factories pumping out those powerful, broadly neutralizing antibodies. Precisely. You see, previous vaccine attempts often failed <gasps> because they tried to jump straight to eliciting that final complex B-ab structure. It was too big a leap. Right. Germline targeting breaks the process down. It anticipates the necessary B cell evolution and proactively guides it. It's much more deliberate. Okay, this theory is elegant. Yeah. Now let's get into the tangible results. What did we see in human trials? Let's start with IVI G001. That was the initial proof of concept, wasn't it? It was, and it was absolutely groundbreaking. In G001, researchers used an engineered protein immunogen called EODGT8 6 dimer as their primer. Okay, that specific molecule. Yes, and why they chose that one is fascinating. They designed it very carefully to mimic a specific spot on the HIV envelope protein, the V2 apex. A stable spot. A critical, relatively stable binding site. By presenting just this specific structure, they hope to force the right kind of initial B cell response, targeting that vulnerable spot the virus couldn't easily change. And the results for that initial activation, did it work? It worked remarkably well. 97% of the participants successfully generated the targeted B cell response they were looking for. Wow, 97%. Yeah, that success rate was just a powerful validation that the germline targeting theory could actually be achieved in humans. It wasn't just on paper anymore. That's huge. It is. We should also mention, though, the study did highlight you know, the challenge of genetic diversity. They found about 2% of people actually lacked the specific gene variant needed to respond to that particular primer strategy. Okay, so not 100%, but still incredibly high, showing the concept works for most. And that success must have directly paved the way for the next step, the phase one trial, IAVI G003. Exactly. And G03 introduced a really modern twist using mRNA technology. Why shift to mRNA for this specific germline strategy? What's the advantage? Well, the shift to mRNA is potentially a massive advantage technologically. Remember, for germline targeting to work, you have to find and activate those extremely rare, naive B cells. We're talking tiny numbers. Right. mRNA delivery allows the body itself to produce a very pure, high concentration of that primer protein right where it's needed in the lymph nodes. This basically increases the odds that those rare B cells will actually bump into their target and get the wake-up signal. Makes sense. More efficient delivery. More efficient, and plus mRNA allows for much faster, more scalable manufacturing which, you know, is absolutely vital if you're thinking about a global vaccine down the line. Yeah. Okay, so G003 took that same primer concept, the EOD GT860 merger, delivered it via mRNA, and crucially tested it in African populations, South Africa and Rwanda. That shows a commitment to global relevance right from the start. Absolutely critical. So what were the results for the priming step in G003? Did the mRNA approach work as well? The initial reports are very encouraging. They indicate approximately 94% of participants develop that desired initial activation response. 94%. So very similar to the first trial, but using mRNA in, in different populations. Exactly. 
It confirms that the initial, arguably most challenging step finding and waking up those specialized cells is highly effective. It works across diverse populations, and it works well using modern vaccine delivery like mRNA. This is clearly a huge leap forward, but and this is maybe the most critical point for you listening. If 94% responded to the primer, does that mean we now have a protective HIV vaccine? Absolutely not. And that's the crucial clarification we have to make. The 94% success validates the primer step. Mm -hmm. It tells us the foundational plan is scientifically sound. The first step works. But it's only the first step. It's only the first step. Mm -hmm. The subsequent complex steps, the shepherding, the boosting, needed to actually evolve those activated B cells into fully protective B nabs, that work is still ongoing. It's a sequential process. Right. We should also add the safety profile reported so far has been acceptable. Mostly common mild reactions like skin responses and importantly, no serious adverse events. That's also highly encouraging for moving forward to the next stages. Okay, so connecting this major scientific advance back to you, the listener, what are the key takeaways right now for people concerned with HIV prevention, whether in the U.S. or elsewhere? Well, I think the first big takeaway is this shift from something being purely hypothetical research to becoming a tangible possibility. This progress genuinely opens the door to realistic vaccine regimens that honestly were unimaginable even a decade ago. That hope is important. but right. And this is so critical that the scientific leap forward absolutely does not replace the prevention tools we rely on right now. Precisely. Could not agree more. Until a fully protected vaccine is successfully developed, rigorously tested, proven effective, and widely distributed, which is still some way off. Right. The continued importance of regular HIV testing for early detection, the critical use of pre 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 exposure prophylaxis for those who can benefit, uh -huh. and practicing safe sex, treating infections early if they occur, these remain our absolute best lines of defense. Nothing changes there for now. Okay. So as Researchers push forward with those complex boosting stages. What's the biggest remaining question mark? What's the next big hurdle? The biggest question really is whether this fantastic priming response that we're seeing translates into durable real-world protection against actual HIV infection. Does step one lead to the final goal? Exactly. We need to confirm that the sequential boosting strategy actually generates effective BNAMs in sufficient quantities and for long enough to reliably stop the virus in a real-world scenario. And critically, we need to confirm that this whole sophisticated multi-step training works effectively across the full spectrum of human genetic diversity. What really stands out to me, though, is the fact that this priming step works so well in diverse populations and that this success is linked to modern mRNA technology. It feels like this wasn't just a win for an HIV-specific strategy, maybe. No, you've absolutely hit on the broader implication here. The success of IAVI G003 building on G001 confirms that the immune system can be meticulously programmed. It can be primed, boosted, and directed towards a potent defense against even a highly complex, unstable target like HIV. So the strategy itself, the concept, is sound. The strategy is scientifically viable and, frankly, incredibly bold. It's working. So the path from where we are now, this tangible possibility to a widely available vaccine, it really hinges on successfully navigating those complex boosting steps, right? Turning those activated rookie B cells into the elite defenders. That's the next mountain to climb. But the fundamental insight here, maybe the most exciting thing for the future, is that this trial didn't just validate an HIV strategy. It seems to validate a kind of universal design principle. How so? Like a way to attack other complex shape-shifting diseases by using sequential immunogens delivered potentially via highly adaptable tech like mRNA. That breakthrough could define the future of vaccine science way beyond just HIV. That's a powerful point. The potential applications are indeed very broad. But focusing back on HIV for a moment, until that full vaccine regimen is complete and proven. Yeah. We really encourage you, the listener, to stay proactive. Keep up with testing. Use the prevention methods available now, like PPP if it's right for you, and stay engaged with your healthcare providers. That way, you're informed and ready when this next generation of prevention tools eventually becomes available.